Hi everybody, I'm Simon Cooper from the Cooper Strip Club and today I'm going to be stripping this china cabinet. It's got quite a uh, sustained timber this time with a, um, some sort of varnish. What I want to do is I'm going to finish stripping this top and uh, before I do that I want to mask around it so it's not dripping down onto the sides of the cabinet. It's a pre-taped film. So we'll take off any paint or varnish and does it in a very mild way. It's not a heavy duty product, it's, it's actually pretty much pH neutral. It does it by dissolving. The objective of today is to show you how to strip without sanding. And the reason for this is that the person who made this cabinet actually sanded it for us. Which is pretty good of them. Yeah. So what we do is we, we spray the stripper on, we're moving our trigger all the time as we go, we, we're moving, we're sweeping, and we should be able to see as it starts to fizz up. So it's going to need about five minutes of soak time, and we're going to keep it wet with the stripper as it goes, so as it's on this side over here you can see this drier patch starting here. That's not that I missed it, it's just that the strip has been fully drunk up. So we just spray more over the top, which is a real advantage over if you were hitting it with a brush. We're coming to you today from our Gasworks building. We've uh, a bit echoey, which I think adds to the effect. Later on we'll take you out to see what it looks like outside. It's a pretty impressive building. Come over here, Dory. I'm going to show this mark that we think looks a bit like a Vaseline bottle or something that's gone through the varnish over time. I always keep my blade on a little bit of an angle so it keeps pushing the goo to the centre. A flexible blade, Simon rather yeah. than a stiff. Yeah, this one is a hide blade. It's uh, an American blade. And it's really, really good for this sort of work. You can use wider ones, but you've got to be careful because if the surface has got any warps in it, you're going to potentially gouge into it. It's quite good to scoop it off into as you go, it keeps the mess down. We tend to ignore any of the weird marks initially, don't we? A lot of stuff just comes away. I've got some of that plastic I was using earlier on the ground as well. So it's a controlled mess. I always drag because there's less chance of digging into the wood. Scooping, it's really easy to bang into things. On the moulding like this, a chunk of steel wool is ideal. And again, remember, it's sanded already, so why sand off all this varnish and take forever? Just too easy. So it doesn't take out all the stain, it takes an amount out. It gives you a really nice natural. Because remember that when it was made, it was sanded, and then the first coat of varnish or whatever went on, and that soaked into the grain, and that's the one that we're after. So that's deep in the grain, and this is how you can get into these areas really easily. Again, always note that I'm moving my hand, sweeping it. It's not so important for a, a top, but for the sides it will be definitely important. The green's coming up really, really, really beautiful. So we leave this on for only a couple of minutes, there's no need to 
need a pretty big time. And so being a thin stripper, being that it's not acidic or alkali, it's going to absorb into the wood, causing no damage to the timber. So there's going to be no furring or any of these sorts of things. Um, and it's going to dissolve anything that can be dissolved, varnish, stain. Some of the colour will remain. Um, we'll give it a scrub. Just of interest. Can never check out of this um, the amount of goo. So there's a lot of finish on the top alone. But other than an end grain, you're always going in the direction of the grain and you're using it wet so you don't cause any scratches. So you're talking about the wall being wet or the surface being wet? The surface is wet that we're scrubbing, we're not scrubbing a dry surface. So I don't know if I've introduced this person behind the camera, this is Dory, Dory Cooper, all Coopers around here. Hi. And, uh, <laughs> she's my conscience and wife. Reminds me of the things that I forget to say, which is brilliant. Don't think I'm as conscious. Yeah. <laughs> as we go, we see the wet colour and the marks are reducing. It's got some red stain there. I don't care if there's a little bit of that left at the end. We're not trying to make it perfect. We're trying to keep its antique character. The patina. Yes. Had a few years to get these marks. So. If you're in a small area, make sure you've got some ventilation going. If you want to, you can wear a carbon mask if you want. One of the big things is controlling your waste. So effectively the stuff that I put into here before, that's full of stripper. So if that's put somewhere else, that's all good. Okay, now we get that white. Pushing it all back down into the grain. Okay, that's the, the end of part two, and so we'll be back in a moment. Part three. The top's got thousands of little sandpaper marks on it, and these grits are like a record player needle, and so we spray the flusher on and we don't wait for the stripper you know like the stripper where we leave it for four or five minutes you're spraying and you're scrubbing at the same time the needles of the grip are getting into those sandpaper marks and uh, sweeping it clean so our, our grip pad is not full of wood it has got stain from the old finish So in my world, this is a pretty cool colour. This is a really nice honey brown there. So a lot lighter than it was when it was stained. Now it looks more real. To know what you're going to get, as I said before, you look at the wet colour. So I'm just giving a quick little wet up of the flashy here. So without the gloss, right, Simon? Yeah. So whatever finish you put on it, the colour it will be will be this. So there's two remnants here, the, the, the mark here, there's a little bit of it left, and back over here. Now you get choices at this point. If you want that gone 100%, then you may end up taking so much of the colour out of here that you've got to do it to the whole top, and then you have to have the skills to uh, replicate that colour. So you may need to be a, have a professional do it, but if you want to do it yourself, um, I would personally stop at this point, um, because it's going to match in with the base. So. It's really important, isn't it, not to look at the dry colour, because the dry colour has lots of blemishes and weird marks. Yeah, the people get fooled by looking at the dry colour later and make too many wrong decisions. But if it looks all right wet, that's what it's going to look like. And later on I'm going to show you a wood finish that we're going to use, our moisturiser, and it's really good for not highlighting those types of marks. So it's going to look great. We've, um, Lifted it up onto the drums, as you can see. 
and we've masked off the lead light, taken the handles off. The um, stripper is not going to actually hurt the lead, uh, but it'll take the blackening off the lead, so it comes up all silvery. So I've used our masking film to uh, protect that. So we're just going to now repeat on the sides what we uh, did on the top. Uh, the sides will be quicker because there'll be no stains and things to deal with. Uh, we're not going to do the inside of the cabinet, it's, uh, and it's still in pretty good order, so no need to do that. If you do that movement of your hand, you won't have it running all over the place. It's raining cats and dogs outside at the moment. Thing to note too, Simon, that the doors there are ply, aren't they? And Kirkus is obviously fine on veneer and ply. You are so right. Sometimes people ask us what it's like in the cold. Well, today is cold. Yeah. Not as cold as some places with lots of snow, but for New Zealand, it's cold. So we'll just leave this for about five minutes. You can see on the front here how it's all going fizzy looking. It always looks quite cool. And uh, so the stripper I put on has all been drunk up. So we want to put more on there. The guide again talks about keeping it wet. So we spray more on the top. About five minutes is the total time this sort of varnish needs. Different times, the same stripper can be used for any type of paint or varnish. The times of soak do change depending on what you've got. If you're spraying away and it suddenly starts sucking air because the little bit that comes at the bottom is suddenly in the air, then you need to just twist it around until you get it where it should be. Yeah. You'll see we're spraying over the hinges. Cooper's is fine on metal. Let's now see what we've achieved. A bit like testing your cooking, see if it's all soft. It's all good, it's not pushing hard. So, that looks like it's ready to go. Put plastic on the ground at the start, so I can just at the end of it all wrap it all up. It's pretty cool, isn't it? The silent pastiness is a good symptom, isn't it? That it's ready to come away rather than a crunch. If you get a crunchy sound, then you know that it's not had long enough. Whether you're doing the plywood doors in the house or the cabinets, whatever, veneer tops, this is the same method for all. Yeah, I'll grab that. So this is part one, the bolt removal stage. I tell you, this looks bad for this here. And then you can see it. That's all right. Take my word for it. That is the end of part one. Taking off what's on the surface. Back on to part two. Now what I'll do is I'll work on this middle part because that'll be more interesting for you. And then I'll just finish up the outsides off the camera. So you scrub it in the direction of the grain. Just yanking out all the varnish that's in the grain. You can Effectively, buy a cabinet like this at a garage sale on a Saturday morning and have it restored by lunchtime. It's an incredibly fast way of stripping off old varnish. And remember, what we're doing all the way is reusing 
the sanded surface that's already there. We also don't mind what your intention is next. You could uh, lime it, texture it, paint it, oil it, urethane it. It'll be ready after we've completed this. Absolutely. A cool thing if you're playing with textures and, and funking something up um, and you just hate it, you've got the stripper there to remove it again and, and then play all over again. Yeah, she can. So the pressure's off you. Yeah. <laughs> but it allows you to be creative without fear of once on and that's it. So that's part two. Always remember again, in the grain. See the grain coming through now from the drawers. That was it not there before? If I can grab a lot of the goo here, I use less flusher next. It all adds up. Roll your rag rather than pushing it all back in again. So this piece had an element of stain put into it, didn't it, um, initially with the first urethane? Yeah, this was stained at the start with a varnish of some sort on top. Yeah. So, flusher again, this is part three. So we spray and scrub, and then we spray and wipe. So, and again the grit pad. So, remember as before we think that the little grits get into the sandpaper grooves, and we're not neutralising. A lot of people think we're neutralising. We're just mobilising off those residues so you can put them onto a rag. And if you're thinking, am I going to clear finish this thing or am I going to paint it? The wet colour is your show and tell. So you're actively looking for the uglies now. Some pieces are a pig's ear and you're going, ah, she's going to be painted or um, you're going, this is amazing. But do ignore the dry. So this has got a few boot marks from its life. And I like them, they add to its story. So we haven't taken out all the colour. I don't think we need to. It's what it's what it's maker decided. And so that's that part there. So that centre column is now ready for a finish. So I'll just work around the outside and and then we'll come back to you when it's ready for finishing, which won't be too far away, so don't go away. We're stripped, we're ready to finish. Just wanted to show you on the tops here, so the, you saw me spraying in the front, but on these tops it needed to be done as well, so I just brushed the stripper along there, so there was, um, that was all really easy, so the top of the drawers, the doors, so that's how they, if you were wondering that, that's what was what. I wanted to take his outside and show you the outside of this building, you can see all these bricks, it's an interesting space. Um, so let's go outside. This is the gas wax. Built about 1906. told you what it is, it's the Woodville Gas Works, and it's now the home of Cooper's Strip Club, every strip club needs a home, and behind this wall here is where I was working, so this is the, the, the coolest environment for stripping and wiring there is. Okay, it's tomorrow, and the cabinet's now nice and dry, all the flushes uh, evaporated out of the wood that was there to be, didn't come off the rag, and you can see that it's all gone pale. Uh, and I'll talk a bit more about that in a minute. But what I'm going to do at the moment is say, is, okay, how much did we use? People will be interested in that. So I'd filled these two bottles up to the 500 mil mark. So we've used about three quarters of a litre to strip it and about 300 mils of the flusher. So you can do a lot of stripping with a litre with Coopers. So you can see all that stuff on the website, but I'll put this aside for the meantime. And now I want to talk to you about wood finishing. So, um, this is a really critical part because 
if you look at this top, you're going to see there's lots and lots of blemishes there, marks and different things, and um, people will be really tempted at this point to uh, rip in the sandpaper, and they'll get rid of all that, and what they're going to do is remove a lot of the character, especially if it's an antique, um, and they're going to uh, rip into the, the grain, and it's going to look brand new compared to the rest of it. You've got to remember the wet look. So when I was doing the stripping before, I talked a lot about the, the wet look is the finish look. That's with the flusher. And you'll see when we put finish on this, the colour will come back to that. Well, it better do anyway. Um, now, you can use anyone's finish on this at the moment. There is no residues of stripper in there. That's what the flusher's job was to do, was to remove all that. So you've got now what we call a clean, dry, absorbent surface. And we can finish this with polyurethane or with shellac or with Danish oil, tongue oil, whatever you want. You can even paint affect it if you want. Um, and that's all good to go for that uh, without any sand. Now, we make a finish called moisturizer. And this is a blend of gum, oil, and wax, all synthetic. And this is a whole different style of finishing. And it's where we condition the wood to repel moisture. So really easy to use this stuff. And it's based on a really, really ancient way of finishing in the old castles when they used to have sheep on spits and things like that. Um, so if it's too cold like it's today, I just put that in some warm water before just to, to get it to a better brushing consistency. And grab ourselves a, a brush. And just a any old brush, make sure it isn't all full of paint that's going to smear around. Brush this on and leave it on for a couple of days minimum. This is pretty cool when this goes on. Now, it doesn't matter if it's a cold day, like today, or a hot day, or a humid day, it doesn't care because this finish isn't actually going to dry. Now don't think for a second we're going to leave it greasy because that's what we do in a few days time is take off any surplus. And we just slap this on and all those blemishes that you get all worried about have all magically disappeared and gone back to the wet colour. Isn't that so cool? And I read a lot of antique posts and things out there and people are busy sanding off everything and creating just so much extra work for themselves. So that looks pretty damn good. So I'll put some on the front. So you don't need any special skills here. If you want a shiny finish, this won't give you a shiny finish. This will give you, which you'll see in a, after we've left it for a couple of days gives you what we call a mellow glow. Now, if the um, piece of furniture that you're restoring has got any splits on the top or anything, like the end grains I was talking about up there, if the piece has been next to a window for years and years and the top's got a bit of a split in it, the moisturizer is brilliant because it, it feeds the, the wood. It's, the wood will absorb what it needs and those splits will actually close up slightly, they're not going to go back to nothing, but it'll definitely stop it getting worse. The one thing that people often do is they'll buy themselves this beautiful antique and they'll move it from somewhere it's been for two or three hundred years and it's been in this very stable environment and it's moved into a different country or somewhere and it might be a lot uh, drier, the humidity and everything may be way less and suddenly the furniture starts drying out and uh, that can cause real problems. And so this actually will stabilize all that. The actual wood will drink up and it helps the furniture stabilize while it's getting used to it's a new place. The moisturizer is all on and we're gonna now leave it for two days. Now, the two days is just a number I made up one day. It could be two weeks if you want. It all depends on how much time you've got. Um, you can actually just leave it on a day if you're hurrying to, for an event. But two days is our number. I'm noticing there's a few brushes, brush marks there, um, a couple of hairs from out of the old paintbrush. Doesn't matter. 
they're not going to cause any problems at all so don't don't freak out so and over the next couple of days it's going the colors are going to improve as well so i'll be looking forward to showing you the buff part it's been a week since we saw you last we were at a home show so we left the cabinet to soak a really good time and um, and it's been all dust over it and all sorts of things but that's all right because it doesn't matter the thing that's finished is very different to normal products and that is that it doesn't dry and people go oh that seems weird and it's still all gummy and you can see areas where it's been drinking up and going for it uh in grains when i got back uh, yesterday it was uh, very dry so we fed it up some more with a top like this which has had a bit of time to soak it's a little bit stickier than it would be after a couple of days so what we do is a towel is really good this is a good way of getting new towels everybody you sacrifice one to the cause and you just buff it and uh, the the friction gets a bit of warmth going we're still in winter here so if you're actually in a room with a bit of a heater it makes a big advantage oh yeah come and check this out Darren. it's like touching silk when you're touching this you're actually touching wood you're not touching this layer it's pretty full on this timber is exploding with color around the edge Now, I'll be hopefully delivering this in the next few days to the lady that lent it to me and we'll be hopefully being able to get a shot of it in its new home. See the glow that's forming on it now on the edges where he's just buffed it? Yes, it's called, we call it a mellow glow. It's not a gloss level. It's quite different altogether. Water beads on it, doesn't it, Simon, rather than absorbs in? Yes, the, the ingredients in the moisturiser will not mix with water. So what we've done here is conditioned the wood to repel moisture. That is spot on. So, Show us on the front. I'm really looking forward to seeing those drawers. Really? very simple way of finishing timber. The wood's going to drink up what it can, you buff off what it can't absorb, and it just glows. And it won't go yellow like your urethanes do. Well people spend so much time stripping and sanding and all that stuff and then they pull urethane up and then you get all this dust on it and little bits and it never seems to come up quite the way they want it and the moisturiser is just so simple to get a result cool thing about this too, if you find that you've missed a bit and you've got the moisturiser on and you're looking back at it later on and, and there's a, a bit you've missed and you don't like it you just spot strip through it, flush it, put the moisturiser back on and no one will know you've come and been because there's no rigid finish that you're having to work through that glow down there. No, it's, it's great. Any little marks like where people have booted it, they will just become part of its new patina. Wow. So I'll continue on with the ends, get the hardware on, and then it'll be ready for delivery. So hopefully next time you'll see me is in the lounge. The journey is done. The China cabinet is in its home. Most people work for meatballs and money. I like working for wine. So a nice Hawke's Bay Shiraz. So very well done. It pours very well and tastes well as well. It looks great. This is not shiny. It is what we call a mellow glow. So it's been fun, but this is the end of this particular journey. So until we see you again, 
Cheers. Well, this was your day, wasn't it, in a sense? Because you, you got it for... A, $50. For a bargain to start with. Yeah. Mm. And then you... Um, and then had a restore restore for you. And, um, yeah, the only reason she did that was because she wanted a fish tank in where that was sitting. So she had to get rid of it. 